Hi and welcome! In this video, I'll be covering all the crafting stations in the world of Valheim, how to make them, and why you'll need them. Crafting in Valheim is more than just a game mechanic, it's a gameplay experience that's immersive, rewarding, and downright addictive, so grab your hammer and let's get started. First up is the humble workbench. It's simple to build, only requiring a hammer and 10 wood, but this mighty crafting table will be the core of your stronghold. Workbenches are used for crafting, repairing items, and required to build various basic structures. Wherever you place the workbench will denote your build area, which is a 20 meter radius from the centre of the workbench. To see this area, select your hammer and the workbench in the build menu. You'll now see either a white or red dotted line marking the build radius. The difference in colour simply shows whether you can build or can't build. Once a workbench is placed, the entire build area will be safe from enemy spawns, providing some nice relief and protection, especially early on. This protected area can be extended by adding more workbenches so their radius overlaps. This in turn also increases the build area of your base by an additional 20 meter radius from the centre of the new workbench. Please note that if you upgrade a workbench, other workbenches in and around your base will not be upgraded, unless directly next to or within the upgraded item's radius. For example, two workbenches back to back or on opposite sides of a wall, in theory could both be upgraded with one set of upgrade items. I'll go over the upgrade shortly. Repairs to all tools and weapons at a crafting station are free, and therefore require no additional resources to repair once broken. You won't lose the item, it just can't be used until repaired at the specific level station for the corresponding item. In order for a workbench to be used for crafting or repairing tools and weapons, they need to have a roof and 70% cover. Please note that wooden floor panels do not count towards roofing, so you will need to use a specific roof piece in order to protect from the weather. However, if you are out in the wilderness, you can build under any structure, the entrance to a burial chamber for example, and this will allow for on-the-hoof repairs. Each level of workbench upgrade you make will enable you to increase the level or durability of certain items. In regard to weapons and armour, this also increases the item's damage and or protection. To increase the workbench level and unlock new crafting blueprints, you'll need to build the following items. A chopping block will increase your workbench to level 2 and requires 10 wood and 10 flint to build. A tanning rack will increase your workbench to level 3 and requires 10 wood, 15 flint, 20 leather scraps and 5 deer hide. An adze will increase your workbench to level 4 and requires 10 fine wood and 3 bronze to build. A tool shelf will increase your workbench to level 5 and requires 10 fine wood, 4 iron and 4 obsidian to build. To increase your workbench to level 4 and 5, you're going to require metals that you won't be able to gain until later in the game. But don't worry, getting your workbench up to level 3 will give you plenty to get on with. A great tip to gain deer hide and leather scraps early on is to build a basic flint spear. The throw action of this is much more accurate than the crude bow, and you don't require any ammo. Just learn to sneak. As your workbenches are not linked directly to your base, you are completely free to delete a workbench, and this will not affect your base integrity. However, you will require them in order to repair any of your base structures, but only a level 1 workbench is required. Another good tip for not only preventing enemy spawns, but also to enable quick building repairs, is to dig a hole just inside your base exterior wall and place a workbench inside of this. Then cover with either a wooden or stone floor protection, mainly for aesthetics, and voila! If you don't yet have a pickaxe, then just build some protective walls around the bench, and or hide it within your walls. The forge is the next big step in Valheim crafting, enabling you to build epic weapons and armour, superior building tools and items such as nails to craft your ships. However, this can't be built straight away and you'll need to beat the first box Ilkthir in order to obtain hard antler to craft a pickaxe to start mining. You'll also need to have explored the black forest and the burial chambers that lie beneath to obtain circling cores that are required to build the charcoal kiln and smelter. These enable you to process your ores into metal ingots to build and use at your forge. Please see the pinned comment and linked video for a full guide on burial chambers in Valheim. Before I focus on the forge, I'll quickly go through the charcoal kiln and smelter, which are available to build once you acquire a certling core. The charcoal kiln takes 20 stone and 5 certling cores to build, and requires a workbench. It can hold up to 25 wood at a time and processes 1 charcoal every 16 seconds. When adding wood to the kiln, it'll prioritise wood in the following order. Wood, then fine wood, then core wood, so be really careful which logs you're throwing into the kiln. The smelter requires a set of building materials of the charcoal kiln, and as you'll get 100% of your materials back when you destroy structures, you can easily alternate between the two if you've only found enough certain cores to build either one of these early on. Fueled by coal, 
The smelter will convert your metal ores to metal ingots, consuming one coal every 15 seconds, to produce one metal ingot every 30 seconds. It can hold up to a total of 20 coal and 10 ore, which can be a mixture. For example, copper and tin ore can be loaded at the same time. At present, the materials that can be smelted are copper ore, tin ore, silver ore, iron scrap, copper scrap and iron ore, although this last one is not currently available to mine in game. The processing times of both the kiln and smelter can be sped up by the passage of time that happens when the player is sleeping, so it's always a good idea to fully load your kiln and smelter before you sleep, so when you wake up you can get straight with important Viking business. Both of these items do not require cover like workbenches and actually require adequate ventilation for smoke above them, otherwise they'll stop working. Okay, let's get onto the forge. So you'll need a workbench to build this item and it requires 4 stone, 4 coal, 10 wood and 6 copper. Like with a workbench, to be used for crafting or repairing tools and weapons, it needs to have a roof and 70% cover, but can be used at level 1 without cover to build structures that require the forge, for example wood iron and braziers. The forge can be upgraded to level 7 by building the following items. Forge cooler takes to level 2 and requires 25 fine wood and 10 copper. Anvils take it to level 3 and require 5 wood and 2 bronze. Smith anvils take it to level 4 and require 5 wood and 20 iron. The forge tool rack takes it up to level 5 and requires 10 wood and 15 iron. Forge bellows take it to level 6, require 5 wood, 5 deer hide, 4 chain. Grinding wheel takes the forge to level 7 and requires 25 wood and 1 sharpening stone. This nicely segues into the most important crafting station in the game, the stone cutter. This requires two iron ingots to build, so you'll have had to explore the swamp biome and gathered scrap iron from the deep, dark, damp depths of the sunken crypts. It's very much worth the grind, pun very much intended, as it will not only enable you to make a grinding wheel for your forge upgrade, but it will give you the ability to build stone structures, transforming your base into a true viking stronghold. Please note that in order to craft the grinding wheel, you'll need to place your stone cutter under cover, like with the workbench and forge. However, for building stone structures, cover is not required. As you move toward exploring the plains biome, the next crafting station you'll require is called the Artisan Table. However, you'll only be able to build this after defeating the mountain's boss, Moda, and obtaining two Dragon Tears. The Artisan Table enables you to build blast furnace to smelt your black metal scrap, make spinning wheels to create linen thread from flax found in the plains, windmills to produce flour from barley also found in the plains, and stone ovens to produce higher level foods. The artisan table will require a roof and 70% cover to interact, but cover is not required for example when using to place a windmill. Once you've conquered the plains and start exploring the mistlands, the next crafting station you'll want to build is the black forge. This item requires a workbench, 10 black marble, 10 new gristle wood and 5 black cores, which are found in the infested mines within the mistlands biome. The black forge is required to craft and repair mistland level weapons and armour, and diverge lanterns, and also requires a roof and 70% cover. Currently, the Black Forge can only be upgraded to a level 2 by building a forge cooler, which requires 5 iron, 5 copper, and 4 black marble. To build the current final crafting station, called the Galder Table, it's no simple task, as one of the requirements is an item called Refined Ether. In order to obtain this material, you're going to need to build a sap extractor, an ether refinery, and obtain a material called soft tissue. Now the Galder table is required for making all magical items, and most importantly the awesome Feather Cape, but it is also required to make the Seal Breaker, which is used to summon the current final boss. Now the Sap Extractor requires a Droga Extractor that can be found from one of the guarded outposts in the Mistlands biome, 10 new gristle wood and 5 black metal. Place the Sap Extractor on an ancient route to obtain the Sap. The Sap Extractor will fill over time to hold 10 Sap, and as this is a renewable resource, you can keep farming the same route. However, you won't be short on ancient roots in this land biome. Once you have this, you'll need to build an ether refinery, which is quite a large structure and will combine sap and soft tissue to produce refined ether. The resources required to build this are a workbench, 20 black marble, 5 black metal, 10 new gristle wood, and 5 black cores, and 3 sap. The ether refinery will hold 20 sap and 20 soft tissue and process it at a roughly 1 to 1 ratio, taking just over 13 minutes to make 20 refined ether. Please note that whilst the ether refinery is processing, it will emit small random discharges that inflict lightning and poison damage over time, so it's a good idea to either build it outside and away from other buildings, or to place it an iron cage around the structure if you want to place it within a building. Soft tissue is obtained from either mining resource nodes found inside the skulls of giant remains scattered throughout the mistland biome, 
from broken Virga crates and found in Virga camps and structures, and also has a chance of being dropped by Virga rogues and mages at their demise. To build the gravel table, you will require a workbench, 10 black metal, 20 Eurusal wood, 5 black cores, and refined ether. As with the other crafting stations, it will require a roof and 70% cover. Currently, you can only upgrade the gravel table to level 2, with the addition of a rune table that requires 10 black marble, 5 Eurusal wood, and 10 refined ether but this only enables slightly higher upgrade levels to the magical items. And that, my friends, is currently all the crafting stations available in Valheim. Now I am aware that I have not mentioned the fermenter or any of the cooking stations, as these will be covered in a separate guide about consumables. So until then, please don't forget to like and subscribe, have fun, and good luck. See ya!